Okay. Who is going on? Uh-huh. Hey, hey, happy people. So today we are going to be making pot pie. I know spring is coming in and pot pie is usually uh, made during the colder months, but because I like to have pot pie with fresh garbanzo beans in it to replace the peas and I only have access to them like usually early spring, so I usually make my pot pie then. So we're just going to make pot pie today. I don't care how hot it is, but it's not that hot outside. Um, First, we're going to start off by making our crust. And I have three cups of spelt flour here. We're going to be using the food processor to make this today. So, let's just get started. This is brown spelt flour. And I got a teaspoon of sea salt. Just going to pour that in there. And we're just going to pulse this to get that blended up. Alright, now. I have three fourths of a cup of this is quinoa milk today, and one half of a cup, one half of a cup, ingredients right there, <laughs> one half a cup of grapeseed oil, and we're going to mix that together before we actually pour it in here. You may not need all of this, so don't pour it all at one time. As I usually say, it just depends on your flour and your weather. It could be the same bag of flour, and I noticed that you might need more liquid than you did previously. So, all right. Okay. All right. So we're gonna put the turn this on, and we're just gonna drizzle in our uh, mixture here until we get a dough ball. Check this out and knead a little bit, which is not something I like to do. Gonna need this 
Get us a nice ball here. Get everything all put together. split this in half because we need a top and a bottom crust. This makes more than a top and a bottom crust but I always overdo it with this so more is better than less. <laughs> you don't want to have a bottom crust and not have a top one. Alright, put one piece in there. Now we gotta roll this out. Ah, rolling. One of the other reasons why I only probably make pot pie like once a year. Alright, I didn't bring any extra flour. So I got a pie dish here. This is a nine inch pie dish. I'm gonna see if this is big enough to fit. It has already been oiled with grapeseed oil. Sorry, didn't tell you all that. So we're just gonna fit that down off in there. put this in the oven for about it's gonna go on 350 for about 10 minutes basically I just want my crust to uh, bake there so that way my bottom crust won't be all doughy when we put our filling in there so I'll be right back all right I am back while our crust is cooking we are going to move on to step two here we have to uh, fry up some <coughs> We need to fry up our mushrooms and our burrow bananas. This is uh, three of the king oyster mushroom or uh, the trumpet mushroom as I like to call it. The uh, trumpet, it was about this size here but it's three of those. And we have some baby burrow bananas. These are green. Make sure they are green because if they are yellow they will be sweet. But I did about four of these small bananas. This is going to be your substitute for your uh, potato. Do not try to boil this because they will just turn into mush. So you need to fry them up, get a little crispy in so when they're in the uh, pot pie, it doesn't just turn into mush uh, in the pot pie. Your mu oyster mushrooms, king oyster mushrooms are going to be uh, your chicken substitute. So we're just going to fry these up a little bit so they won't be so hard. They'll get like a more... Uh, softer texture to them so they won't be so hard to uh, bite into tough should I say so my oil has been heating here so I'm gonna go ahead and start with my mushrooms this is grapeseed oil just enough in the pan to fry these and that's it we're not gonna deep fry them
All right, they are crispy enough. So now, take them out. Okay, so I am back. We have finished uh, frying up our burro bananas and our mushrooms, which is going to be our potato and chicken substitute here. So now we have to move on to making the rest of our filling. And I have a pot here, and I'm going to use uh, my alkaline butter. I do have a video for that. I will link it in the cards after the video. Um, I really don't know. This is probably about two tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon and a half. I'm only going to use about half right now. A tablespoon and a half, let's just say. I'm going to let that melt down there. And while that's melting, I'll run the ingredients here so you guys can see what it is with the measurements. If you do not have the butter, you have not went to MrStayHappy.com and ordered your alkaline butter or made your own, you can use grapeseed oil, whatever oil you want to cook with. Uh, avocado oil will be just fine too. Alright, so our butter has melted, so now we're going to go ahead and start adding our ingredients. We're going to start with the fennel. I usually use fennel bulb, but I have already used the bulb and all I had was the stalks. So I'm using the stalks this time. This is your celery replacement, but fennel is kind of tough, so you need to cook it first because <laughs> it's going to take a little longer than the rest of the ingredients to cook. So I start with the fennel first. put in our butternut squash this is to replace carrots in your normal uh, pot pie and why my pot keep moving it doesn't like to be still I 
Okay. 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 So now we're going to go ahead with the rest of our vegetables here. We have button mushrooms. This is usually not in your regular pot pie. It's not a substitute for anything. I just like mushrooms. Got some yellow orange bell pepper. Again, usually not in your pot pie. I just want them in there. I like the color and I like bell pepper. Got some shallots here. Regular yellow onion. If you notice that your vegetables are starting to stick, go ahead and add some more butter or oil, or you could even use your veggie broth. Now, for the star of this whole dish for me is the fresh garbanzo beans. Now, I have already cooked these. I shelled them and cooked them and usually I try to put as much as possible in there because these are so good, y'all. Look at these. These are so good. Fresh garbanzo beans. They have that buttery feel to them. They're like peas. This is my substitute. Alright, so that hurt my feelings. Like, hurt my feelings. I love fresh garbanzo beans. And the fact that I just spilled like half of the ones that I was able to obtain uh, on the floor. Alright, so I was going to tell the story of usually I try to put as many as I can in here because, like I say, I love them. But when I got to the store, they did not have that many. And it's only around spring that they have them. So. I don't get to have them all year long, and I just wasted half of what I had on the floor. But, let's continue. I only want to finish this now. <laughs> garbanzo beans. Fresh garbanzo beans. I did shell them and uh, put them in just a little water and sea salt and boil them till they were soft. Because they are hard when you first get them. Got that all mixed in. Got some green onions. Just chopped up green onions there. Starting to smell amazing already. Now this is just sprigs of uh, off of the uh, fennel stalks, the sprigs are at the very top. We're just going to add some of that in there. And I have here my kamut grain. This is going to be the substitute for corn. When you cook this, you want it to, you don't want to cook it to the rice texture. You want to, uh, this is soaked overnight. Now I'm throwing off because 
All I keep thinking about is my garbanzo beans are gone. Uh, okay, so soak your kamut overnight. Uh, then I cooked it in spring water and salt for about 20 to 30 minutes, but just until I got like a corn like texture to it, like that pop feel to it, not the rice texture, which is up to about an hour. So this is going to be our substitute for our corn. All of that mixed in. Yeah, we got some dried cilantro here. Usually I would have fresh, but I didn't think about it. Like, I didn't think to get some fresh. So we're going to use dried cilantro here. our seasonings here, thyme, thyme, you saw it all on the screen there, and a couple of bay leaves here, so we're going to add all of that in there, give it a nice little stir, Add my herbs heat through just a little bit there. That's going. I have this is about a cup and a half of walnut milk, and we got some chickpea flour. This is what's going to give us our creaminess here uh, for our pot pie. And this is about four tablespoons of chickpea flour. We're going to whisk it into the milk first to try to stop some of the clumps because anybody who know about chickpea flour know that it clumps up it do not want to act right all right nice good stir we starting to stick here so definitely need to put some liquid in here we're going to add this first. four cups of veggie broth actually it's mushroom and veggie broth because I ended up adding the uh, ends of some um, baby bellows that I had into my uh, veggies when I was boiling them to make my broth so this is four cups I'm probably not going to use all four cups I just want enough for my vegetables to be creamy for my pot pot filling to be creamy I don't want it to be runny so I'm going to start like this. Give my chickpea flour time to uh, thicken up here before we add any more broth, see if we need any more. But at this point, you'll just add as much as you like. If you like a runny uh, pot pie, then hey, go for it. If you like a more thick, like really thick pot pie, then don't add so much broth. Alright. Let it 
do its thing right quick. Alright, and that is about all I need, it looks like. And I only used about a cup this time. I've used like two cups before, so I just never know, never know. But I like that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but look at that. It's not too runny, but not too thick either. So we are all done with our filling. We're just going to turn this off. Now, I need to go get, oh, no, <laughs> we're not finished. All right, so now we can add our mushrooms and our burrow bananas to this. status. Pot pot status. Alright. Now I'm going to go get my pie crust. Be right back. Alright, so I am back. We have our pie crust that we baked for 10 minutes just so it would be done. If you like a more doughy pie crust, don't bake it first. You can just uh, roll it and then put your filling in there. But I like for the bottom to be a little uh, crispy like my pie crust to be a little crispy not so doughy so I bake mine for before I put it in all right so now we're just gonna add our filling to this I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this let's see pie crust here I already rolled it out y'all don't laugh at my pie crust I'm not that great at rolling dough so press it on there and now I'm just gonna fold it under my bottom crust while I peel off some of the top dough here the pieces are too much guess I could Hold them in. I think that looks pretty good. Alright, now I have a little aquafaba and some grapeseed oil here, and we're just going to brush that on, keep it from drying out so much, and see if we can get a nice brown color on there. got to bring my knife over here to do some slits. Alright, so now I put the aquafaba looking all nice and pretty. Now we're just going to make a few slits here so it'll have room for the steam to come out. So we won't create a gigantic bubble.
Alright, and there we go. So now, we're going to now put this in our oven at 350 for about 20 to 30 minutes. You just want your top crust to cook. Everything else is already cooked and heated through because we just cooked it. But if, of course, you were uh, taking this out of the freezer or refrigerator and it will hold in the freezer, uh, then you will want this to cook for probably like 45 minutes to an hour give the inside time to uh, heat up. But this is only going to go in for about 20 minutes, maybe 30. I'll just keep checking it because, of course, as I see if it's, the top is drying out, I'm going to just brush it again with more of the aquafaba and the uh, grapeseed oil. But just until I see it bubbling through the slits there, and I know it has heated all the way through, and the top has cooked. So, be back in about 30 minutes. Alright, I am back. Our pot pie has cooked all the way through. As you guys can see, nice brown crust there. Got a little darker on there. But that's good. Uh, looks pretty flaky. It is not hard. As you can see, it is still bendable. Alright, so now... Let's get into cutting this bad boy. Where do I want to cut it at? Make sure I cut that bottom one. I'm going to cut myself just a little piece here. Yeah, hot. Alright. Now. Ooh. Well. Try to turn this around so y'all can see. In there, it is all steamy and creamy. It is hot, so I can't pick that up. But y'all can see that. See that? All creamy there. Now that's a pot pie. All right. So now let's just taste this here. See, our bottom crust is not so hard, even though we did cook it beforehand. But the fact that the juice is from the filling itself. All right, it's hot. There's a lot of stuff that holds heat in there. Yeah, I like that. I like the sage that I can take. <laughs> okay, I'm just dropping stuff today. I like that I can taste the sage in there. The garbanzo beans are awesome. It's creamy, but not runny, but not too thick, not too dry. The trumpet mushroom, mm. the trumpet mushrooms definitely give you that meaty texture there. Yeah, I gotta try this. Mm-hmm. All right, this is awesome. So awesome. Wish y'all could be here to eat it with me. Alright, so I'm going to run the list of ingredients right here once again because it was a lot of stuff and it was a two-party there. So, as that's going, I'm going to take me another little bite here. crust does usually come apart at the back but I don't care that's just because I do a bad job of folding it <laughs> alright so 
that is it. Now you know how to make alkaline pot pie. No problem. If you want it to be more of a uh, beef-like pot pie, then I would substitute the um, trumpet muff. <laughs> substitute the trumpet mushrooms for like uh, portobello mushrooms, or maybe um, some dried mushrooms first, and then rehydrate them, but not all the way, so they would just get that uh, beef-like texture to them, and. I would use the uh, no moo bouillon instead of the cluck cluck chick bouillon. Uh, and if you don't know where to get those, you can get them at mrstayhappy.com right there on the screen. There will be a link in the description box to that where you can get all your alkaline seasonings so you can make all these incredible dishes and put some flavor in your life, you know. Um, that is it. Don't forget to like this video. Give me a thumbs up. That helps so much with YouTube. and. Subscribe if you are not a subscribing member. Uh, become part of the Stay Happy family so, you know, we can grow, learn how to cook together, you know, things like that. Make awesome alkaline meals together. Um, share so other people can see how to make alkaline meals too, so they can see how easy it is. Some of them are not so easy, but still know how to substitute and make your uh, regular comfort foods that you are used to. Uh, what else? Hit the notification bell so that way you know. When we drop a video, because as you see, they're getting kind of sparse now and in between because a lot of stuff, busy. But, so you'll know when we do drop a video, so you too can know how to make these alkaline meals. Uh, that is it. Starting to sound corny now. So, until the next time, people, stay happy. Uh-huh. 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 U